so many of us are feeding home cooked food to our dogs right and these home cooked foods if they are not balanced properly can be uh, severely like uh, lacking in many of the nutrients and that can lead to a lot of skin issues so uh, there are different kinds of commonly diagnosed skin disorders in dogs which are not directly linked to uh, nutritional factors but um, they they are also quite prevalent so uh, the bacterial and fungal infections can be secondary to some under, other underlying issue for example allergies then there are others like uh, endocrine dermatosis this is related to diabetes um thyroid cushing's disease and all and or immune mediated if your dog has any immune related issues like autoimmunity and all so these are the commonly diagnosed skin disorders which are not nutritionally related now let's talk about the cutaneous changes due to nutritional abnormalities what does uh cutaneous changes means anything related to skin so skin so these are uh, the factors that we are going to look into today um the most important nutritional factors are protein uh, essential fatty acids zinc and copper vitamin a e b complex so these are the four five factors that we are going to talk about and these and if these are deficient in your uh, dog's food it will lead to some or the other skin disorder so let's start with protein and energy deficiency for proper keratinization your dog's body will need protein from animal sources which are rich in sulfur sulfur rich amino acids so because of protein deficiency there will be not just keratinization abnormalities but there will be secondary bacterial and yeast infections also then skin wound and impaired wound healing the wound will take long longer than usual to heal defluxion means um, loss of hair or excessive shedding uh, then fourth symptom is decubital ulcers so these ulcers you will see decubital means uh, where there is again friction or trauma uh, and uh, loss of normal hair color so there's loss of normal ha hair color during two deficiencies first is protein second is copper and this happens because uh, there is a amino acid called tyrosine which is needed for melanin uh, the production of melanin and melanin something is that gives uh, your dog's hair the pigment that is needed let's move to essential fatty acid deficiency now uh, people are huge fans of omega 3 so everybody wants to add omega 3 to, to to their dog's diet but um, most of the time omega 6 is also lacking in the food omega 6 is missing in your dog's diet then that will lead to all these symptoms you will first see seborrhea then second one is dull coat alopecia hair matting this we everybody knows uh then interdigital exudation we just saw the uh, inflammation between the toes of your dog and uh furnicles also then erythroderma is the intense rash on your dog's uh, abdomen and thorax hyperkeratosis uh, which is thickening of the dog's skin otitis externa yes so this is uh, ear infections or epidermal peeling uh, you will see the peeling on the skin especially on the nose this is more visible on the nose next one is zinc deficiency uh, zinc deficiency primarily you will see lesions on your dog's body and also paired with dark discoloration then there the, there can be papules and pyoderma so pyoderma is when there is pus in the uh, in the inflammatory abscesses hyperkeratosis erythroderma these two are so common they are in every uh, nutrient related deficiency then nail dystrophy is something that you will foot see foot pad disease foot pad disease is also a very common sign of zinc deficiency you will see uh, fissures or cracks in your dog's uh, paw pads slow hair growth and inflammation and gum then there is copper deficiency so the most common sign of copper deficiency is change in hair color of your dog over a period of time of course and not overnight and reduced density of hair pigmented hair on head and around the pale and dry coat yes so these are the four these are simple copper deficiency then vitamin a deficiency it is also uh, important for visual functions so in case of deficiency your dog can have eye inflammation or blepharitis so similarly in dogs also uh, and follicular plugging is something when oil gets locked into the hair follicles and that leads to inflammation papules and uh, rashes and what not scaling and plaques again these are ulcers and lesions on your dog's um, abdomen and legs is where it will be first seen otitis externa is again uh, a ear in inflammation or inflammation in the ear flaps so this is vitamin a deficiency uh, vitamin e is something that should be fed to dogs every single day especially if you are feeding polyunsaturated fatty acids that is omega 3 and 6 
and uh, vitamin E is a lipophilic antioxidant. What that means is uh, lipophilic means it dissolves in fats and your skin basically has a lot of fat, right? You can do both. Uh, of course, there should be an oral supplementation, but topically in case your dog has any sort of skin issues, it can be applied on, uh, on it, like especially to lesions. B complex is a cofactor of essential fatty acids. So if essential fatty acids are deficient, B complex will not be able to get absorbed properly in the diet. And, and, and in the absence of proper B complex in your dog's diet, essential fatty acids will not get properly. Like deficiency symptom is alopecia, uh, flaky dry skin, which is seborrhea. And in case of particularly deficient biotin and riboflavin, biotin is uh, vitamin B7, riboflavin is vitamin B2. These two combined together can lead to lesions. Plus, quickly look into what to add to your dog's diet in case of these specific deficiencies. We discussed the essential fatty acids. So uh, let's get into, get into it first. Omega-3 is, of course, everybody knows what to add for omega-3. Uh, for ALA, uh, you can add flaxseed oil. Flaxseed oil is a great source of ALA. For EPA and DHA, uh, fish fishes and fish oil if you cannot feed fatty fishes to your dog feed a fish oil. now if your dog is um, showing signs of essential fatty acid deficiency the first thing that you should add to your dog's diet is a sunflower oil any of the oils that are given under the la that is linoleic acid along with that there is another omega 6 called gla gamma linoleic acid so you can add hemp seed oil for that if not that then uh, you can go for borage oil or evening primrose oil. Okay, zinc. Yes, zinc is a little uh, complicated because there are not a lot of um, uh, like whole food supplements, whole food ingredients for zinc because oysters is something that is very high in zinc. But oysters is not available in India. And even if it is available, they are not of good quality. Uh, then beef liver has some zinc. Beef chuck has some zinc. Lamb also has some zinc. But it is not enough what your dog needs. Right. Uh, try to find an organic chelate. Uh, organic ones are zinc methionine or even picolinate is fine. So these are the ones that you should go for. The risk factors for zinc. Yes, don't feed too much calcium. Calculate how much calcium you're feeding your dog. If you're feeding a meat-based diet, um, if you have balanced the diet properly, then you need to feed a specific amount of bones to your dog. And that's it. That's all you need to feed. And that will cover your dog's calcium, phosphorus, and magnesium. You don't need to feed anything extra. If you're feeding a kibble diet, kibble already is very high in calcium. So you don't even need to feed a calcium supplement on top of and uh, uh, low essential fatty acids. Yes. So if your dog's diet has low essential fatty acids, that will also lead to low zinc levels and vice versa. Phytates, yes, if you're feeding a vegetarian diet to your dog, uh, and, it's just, and it is especially high in lentils and legumes and beans, which are very high in phytates and even nuts and seeds, then that will also lead to, uh, I mean, zinc will not, be get, will not get properly absorbed through the intestines. Copper, yes, the best source of copper is a ruminant liver. Ruminant liver means uh, ruminant animals, beef, um, lamb, goat, these are the livers that you should feed your dog. It are very, very high in, you cannot feed a goat, lamb, beef liver. Uh, you can go for organic chelates. Again, supplements is something you can go for. Inorganic ones will have poor bioavailability. If you're feeding poultry livers, that also has poor bioavailability. So there is no use of feeding these for copper. It will lead to copper deficiency. If you're feeding zinc supplement, you will also need a proper amount of copper in the diet because a high zinc in your dog's body will lead to copper deficiency and excess of competing minerals. Yes, same. So high amount of zinc and iron will lead to copper deficiency. So you need to be careful of that also. Vitamin A, yes. Liver again uh, is a vitamin A rich source, but it should be fed in moderation. Some people who follow ratio diets, um, they feed a lot of liver, 5% liver of the diet. That is a lot. Um, that can also lead to toxicity and toxicity symptoms of vitamin A are eye inflammation, conjunctivitis. Right. If that is not possible, if you come from a vegetarian household, you cannot feed a liver to your dog. So there are always synthetic supplements, synthetic retinoids. And these are something that are already added to the kibble. So if you're feeding kibble to your dog, you don't need to add a separate vitamin A supplement. Vitamin E, uh, most of the supplements that you will see in vitamin E is alpha tocopherol. Uh, these are isomeric forms of vitamin E. There are total eight isomeric forms of vitamin E. We don't need to need, know that. They are just all mixed tocopherols. 
So your dog needs actually mixed tocopherols, but most people feed alpha tocopherol itself. Uh, weed germ oil, sunflower oil will come. Uh, I mean, there'll be uh, mostly alpha tocopherols in right? Try to avoid excessive iron or D3 because they have antagonistic property, antagonistic relationship with vitamin E. So if you're feeding a lot of iron to your dog or a lot of D3, then that will lead to less vitamin E. B complex, yes. Uh, B12 is not present in vegetarian sources. Uh, you will find that in meat sources only. you can go for is a non-synthetic supplement. Uh, again, try to avoid excessive calcium because they have antagonistic uh, relationship with B complex. If you're cooking and reheating uh, constantly, or even if you're cooking, there is 30% loss of B complex. So you need to make sure that you are adding. Uh, what steps you need to take is quickly make a list of all the symptoms that you see in your dog. Um, all the skin related symptoms and identify what deficiency. Try to make a change in diet, right? If you are feeding a vegetarian diet, try to move to meat-based diet. If you're feeding a meat-based diet, try to identify what is missing and try to add the supplements or whole food sources. Um, you will also need pre some form of treatment for secondary infections with the whole food sources and of course supplements. Try to feed organic and non-synthetic supplements. Um, now, I'm not really good at home remedies and all, but I'll tell you what topically you can apply for just to give you temporary, just to give your dog a temporary relief, right? If there is a rash or if there is lesions or hot spots or papules, you can apply sunflower seed oil or vitamin E oil. You can apply hemp seed oil because hemp seed oil is non-comedogenic. So yes, you don't have to worry about it clogging your dog's pores. Chamomile oil, uh, calendula oil is also something that you can, aloe vera is also something that you can apply now, make sure your dog does not lick it. Neem oil is also that is something that you can apply.